Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tag, once again, we're going to be continuing our series of super ultra budget deck tags. That's right, if you've seen the series already, these are the kind of decks that will not require a single rare or mythic to build. So for those of you who are looking to get started on Magic Arena, these are going to be the deck techs that you definitely want to invest in. So join me today as we play a deck that's against all odds, some way, somehow, a deck that I'm calling basically Control. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Long time viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right into it. So our control deck today is Azorius Colors, which means it's going to be white and blue. Our average mana curve looks about about 2.3. It is a little deceiving, but I'll explain why a little bit later on. In this control deck, we only have 8 creatures, 20 instants, 2 sorceries, 2 artifacts, five enchantments, two planeswalkers, and 21 lands. One thing I wanted to be clear about before we get started is obviously that even though we are playing this on ultra budget, a control deck is a very difficult build to put together without using a single rare or mythic. Having said that, you're about to see that with a little creativity, we can kind of find a way to kind of find that middle ground, which can still provide us some power and some win cons, despite the fact that we will not have some of the major staples that a control deck would have, such as Wrath, since pretty much every Wrath in white and blue tends to be a rare or mythic. So bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead. Let's talk about the creatures in the deck, and then we'll go over our whole game plan. So starting, of course, with our two creatures, we have Terra Matter here and Talarian Terra. Both creatures provide for us an excellent early, mid, and late game option. So Terramander here doesn't look like much, but it will get stronger as the game progresses because it'll have its ability, the adaptability, to give it plus one, plus one counters will cost less as we have more instants and sorceries in the graveyard. Whereas Talarian Terror will get a little cheaper as the game progresses because then it'll have its cost cut for each instant and sorcery in the graveyard. Plus it has protection with Ward 2. We actually have in the deck another type of creature, but it's not actually one we cast, but it is part of our game plan and also our win con. So this is gonna be Ominous Seas. If you have not seen this card, let's talk about it real quick. So this is a two mana enchantment that simply reads, whenever you draw a card, you put a fourth shadow counter on Ominous Seas. You remove eight of those counters from Ominous Seas, and then you get to create an eight, eight blue Kraken creature token. It also has cycling for two. This is of course a super awesome card because as the game progresses we'll be able to keep drawing cards and then cast more counters this will allow us to can make some krakens which will give us a giant creature to then smash through our opponent and hopefully get to victory but in order to maximize all these cards let's go ahead let's talk about now all of the instant sorceries in the deck so going in the one drop slot we have of course our usual card draw considered here with surveils and draws a card for a little bit of protection and a little bit of tempo play we have fading hope here to bounce away something if it's a mana value of three or less we get the scry one so decent again in the early game the two drop slot of course is where we have everything else going for us so this is again where we get a ton of value so we have sunset revelry here really awesome where it can help us draw some cards create some tokens or also give us some life depending on what our opponent has more than versus us Bayin Veil here can be a great tap land in a pinch, but also, since we don't technically have Wrath, this is kind of our only pseudo kind of Wrath, but not really. This is, of course, just going to help weaken our opponent's creatures by minus two until end of turn. This is also a control deck, so we have to have a bunch of counters. So we're going to have Dovin's Veto here, and we have No More Lies as our main cards for counter spells. And then finally, for some card draw and filtering, we have Faithful Mending here. Also has the flashback ability, which is really awesome for our deck because this can allow us to cast it multiple times, and that's why we'll only need three copies. And then finally, we have Behold the Multiverse. It is a little pricier, of course, but with the foretell ability, it becomes really cheap and allows us to do some scrying and drawing cards to help us again get to what we need. As for finally rounding out the rest of the package here, we'll have a couple copies of Narset here to help us dig for our pieces and also can slow down opponents who are doing a little card draw. We'll also have a copy of Sealed of Existence here as kind of our catch-all exile spell. And of course, a couple copies of Portable Hole for the early game, or if anything else has a mana value of two or less that's a non-land permanent to be exiled as well. Our curve is actually a little bit lower than normal for a control deck but that actually works in our favor so this allows us to then put in more options and also allows us to chip down a little bit more on our land so we were rocking some plains of course the islands some idyllic beachfront and port towns tranquil cove and a field of ruin one of the biggest advantages of course of our deck is while we are a control deck we actually don't need everything to come into play untapped immediately so this allows us to run some of the more tap lands than other decks that we played and allows us to then just kind of be a little bit more better with our land drops 
As far as the sideboard is concerned, before I even get into that, as you can see, once again, one of the latest updates from Wizards has kind of broken the sideboard here. So you can see it has 15 cards, but it only is showing only a handful here. So bear with me, we're gonna have to do a quick little modification here in order to make this work. So in the sideboard, what we actually have is we have three copies of Deafening Silence here. This is to stop again enemy control decks and also combo decks out there. A single copy of Fragmentize, just again, Artifact and Enchantment Hate. Some extra copies of Fading Hope here. It only is one, but don't worry, it is actually two extra copies. As for the stuff that you really can't see, but but of course we will have, we'll have Soul Guide Lantern as one of our catch-alls for Graveyard Hate. We also have a couple of copies of Aether Gust for specific colors, i.e. green and red decks out there. Devout Decree, of course, is your removal if you're more concerned about black and red decks out there. Mystical Dispute for enemy blue decks out there. And then another extra copy of Sealed from Existence as your catch-all removal spell. Now, as far as deck strategy and how to pilot this deck, this is going to be a little bit more of a challenge versus some of our other decks, where, as I mentioned with some of our other aggro decks, you just play your stuff, you go sideways, and just beat down your opponent. And the most common misconception with a lot of players when it comes to control decks is you just counterspell everything and blow up the board. Am I right? Correct! Well, well, yes and no, but here's again a little bit more in-depth for you. So how as far as our strategy is, obviously, as you saw earlier, our main way to win is just getting a bunch of Kraken tokens. So get your ominous seas out as soon as possible and just stall out with your opponent. Remember to, again, don't be afraid to aggressively cast those Faithful Mending so that way you can get your land drops. Make sure that, again, you can keep drawing action so that way you start building up those tokens. Of course, if your opponent sees in the early game what you're trying to do, they're probably going to try to blow up your ominous seas, but if you can get at least one to stick or maybe even two or three, that means that you'll be able to overwhelm your opponent very easily and they usually will not have an answer to that. However, if they can stop your ominous seas, that's of course why we have our back option options of Talarian Terror and Terravander, because as you keep casting your spells, these cards will be easier to cast and you'll have extra value out of them very quickly. The best advantage with Terravander is not only is it a flying creature, but it's a adaptability is not sorcery speed so you can do its ability at instant if you have to while in combat or as a defensive mechanism you have eight counter spells in this deck so don't be afraid to use them but at the same time you might want to hold them off mostly for non-creature spells versus actual creature spells unless if you have say something else in your hand that can prevent those creatures from doing damage to you try to maximize the value out of sunset revelry until you get to a point where either you're falling behind so this will help you catch up or don't be afraid again to bounce things with cards such as Fading Hope. Your portable hole's best advantage along with Sealed from Existence is, remember, these cards do not have to exile a creature spell. They can also do non-land permanence. So keep that in mind as you do play the deck. Of course, I will say one more time, the biggest weakness to this deck is you will have a hard time against big creature decks that have a lot of value or protection or decks that go super wide because we don't have Wrath to avoid dealing with that many creatures at once. So if they can overwhelm you faster than we can make our Krakens, you're going to have a bad time. But as long as you acknowledge those weaknesses to this deck and the fact that, again, for a control deck, considering the limitations we have, it's surprisingly pretty powerful despite what we are working with. Now, for those of you out there who are interested in continually upgrading this because maybe you're a big fan of control decks out there, as you can see right now as we're talking, we have a couple other previous deck techs throughout the previous couple months and years that I've done this channel where you can then kind of invest maybe a small amount of extra rares or mythics into it and make them a little bit more powerful. And of course, there are some variants that are going to be valid for both the historic and even timeless format. So if you're interested in maybe going a little bit stronger and into a more powerful format, be sure to check those out. And I'm sure you'll definitely find something that might appeal to you if you're interested in this archetype. But with that out of the way, here are my final thoughts that I want to give on the deck. Originally, when I was going to build this, I wasn't actually thinking of a control deck. I kind of thought of more of like an evasive flying deck, but that sounded very kind of boring, only just because we have so many decks that I've made on this series that are mostly just creature focused. So I wanted to challenge myself to see if we can really make an actual control deck with the limitations of the fact that we don't have Wraths that most control decks have. And considering the results and considering the limitations, you kind of saw today the deck is actually not too shabby with all things considered. So to put it another way, if you are a fan of control decks, if you are a fan of being very counterspell happy, and if you're a fan of just sometimes taking your sweet time, grinding out your games to overwhelm your opponent with value as they eventually run out of steam, I would definitely say, if you're a fan of that kind of gameplay, give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to make a bunch of tokens and eventually overwhelm your opponent, despite the fact that maybe they have more powerful cards in their hand, you'd be surprised at the value this deck can create. You'll be very satisfied with those wins and you'll definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching, everyone. And just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!